Alan Lewis, welcome again to the University of Huddersfield. Thank you so much, John. Uh, you're here today for your inaugural professorial lecture. You're a visiting professor of entrepreneurship here at Huddersfield. Uh, you're giving your lecture tonight. Um, but you've also another link uh, with us, and that is through the Globe Innovation Centre in Huddersfield. Just tell us, uh, it, this, started, this project started uh, about uh, probably uh, 18 months ago, or something like that. Where are we now with it? What's happened well, the project there? started about five years ago, ah. actually. What happened is uh, I bought 20 years ago a company called Illingworth Morris, which was the biggest uh, company in the world in the manufacture of exotic fibre, and normal fibre going through right from spinning right through to the finished product and we've still got uh, that, that company but what happened with the contraction in the industry because of shortage of skills basically and because China moved into the market very aggressively uh, there was a major contraction in that industry and because Yorkshire has been very good to me I've made a lot of money here I decided that we wouldn't take our money and go what we would do is go through a regeneration exercise in Yorkshire. So we kept most of our mills and most of the properties. And we've been going through this regeneration into schools, logistical parks and innovation. And I was very concerned because of the shortage of skills and how Yorkshire, which was such a dynamic centre, you know, 50 years ago, probably Bradford was the richest country in the world, and uh, sorry, town in the world, or city in the world, more Rolls Royces there than any other place in the, in the country. And there was this dynamic uh, uh, centre for entrepreneurs which were here. These guys went out into these green fields and built these fantastic factories. And therefore, with this contraction, that had all gone. And I thought it was very sad. And so I thought what we should do is try and regenerate that. And so by keeping these centres like Globe, and there's another one we're thinking of doing as well in Bradford, we wanted to harness the innovation which we thought existed, or I thought existed, in Yorkshire and Lancashire and bringing it, bringing it into one hub. And uh, at that particular time, Yorkshire Ford was in being. And they came to see me and said, what should we do with these centres of uh, these cities or towns? Uh, which is very sad because these were the fulcrum points of, of these cities and towns. And so I said, well, look, it seems to me if you were the centre of excellence for a certain industry, you really must have that uh, entrepreneurial and innovation spirit here close by. So why don't we form an innovation centre and try and bring back that spirit and get back to skills that we should have? And so they said, fine, you know, we love it, and we'll put a lot of money in. The government said, we'll put a lot of money in. I put the deal together four years ago, and it was also selected by the um, uh, Slathwaite Renaissance Group. So we put the deal together, all set to go, and then the money vanished. You know, the government didn't put any cash up, they went through the crisis, it all fell apart. And uh, what happened is uh, I met... Uh, uh, George Buckley, nice guy, with his business with 3M and my businesses. I met him and I said, look, I'm putting this innovation centre up in Yorkshire. Uh, you're an innovator, your company is great innovators worldwide. I think we've got a kindred spirit, shall we do something together? And we did. And uh, he took 20% or his company took 20%. I kept the property, basically I'm property owner, I think it's about 180,000 square feet there. And we decided we'd make it like a campus town. We would put, you know, state-of-the-art medical centres, state-of-the-art artisan producers of food and uh, beverages and things like that, but also have 54,000 square feet of innovation centre. And we would bring in the innovators from Lancashire and Yorkshire. And it was quite obvious when I read about Huddersfield University and read about... Uh, an entrepreneur you have here, Bob Cry, and I think he's a tremendous entrepreneur. And I met Bob and I felt very comfortable with him, very comfortable. Uh, I met the local authority and I decided to give 10% to the university and give 5% to the local authority, 20% to uh, 3M and the, the balance to myself. And uh, uh, we raised the cash in the private sector and uh, the cash is in the bank and the, the building is starting. Uh, now we've started the development. I'm there tomorrow with all the architects. The demolition is taking place. 
We're now renovating all the fabric of the building and we hope to be open within 12 months. And we've got a massive interest in that place because I think people see it as a campus town. And it's a very interesting story. Um, and I can't uh, have the credit for this statement, but I was sat just before I gave an interview to the Kirklees Council. And one of their administrators, a young lady, sat by me and while I was waiting to go on. And she said, oh, are you doing something with Globe? I said, yes, I am. I'm trying to get something off the ground. She said, isn't that in the Cone Valley? I said, yes. She said, it could be the Silicon Valley, couldn't it? <laughs> and so I thought, gosh, what an opening or, or a, a crescendo for my presentation. And I use that in the, in the presentation. So I'm delighted to say uh, it's a reality. The money's in the bank. We're not waiting for finance. It's all financed by the private sector. We're hoping, obviously, to get some grants to make it super. But it's there and we're going to, uh, we hope, have a centre which is a, a beacon in Europe. I think really it will be something very worthwhile to be leaving to posterity. I think it's a great thing. And if you've, uh, um, you know, vision for five, ten years, what, what do you see for the globe? I think we're going to make a centre of excellence which is going to be unique because, uh, you know, I've been blessed to be an entrepreneur. I love being an entrepreneur. It's an art form. I don't want to spoil my presentation this evening, but it's an art form. And I think a practitioner uh, of entrepreneurship is, you know, very interesting people. And I think uh, we're going to get that from the youth of the area, from um, Yorkshire and Lancashire. And also we've given 10% to the university because what we want to do is to ensure that deserving people who haven't got the finance to go to university or have that, well, that's going to finance some of those scholarships. So I think it's going to be quite unique for another reason as well. Um, a, we're going to have it a centre of excellence, of innovation, but also um, it's unique because 3M and ourselves have decided we'll act as angels which is unique, there's nothing like that in the UK. So we're going to be prepared, not in all cases, obviously, but in cases where we think there's a big potential, we'll be looking to uh, find finance for these guys or finance them and then take them to the market and take a stake. So um, we hope it's going to be uh, seen as something unique in Europe. And uh, just digressing slightly, uh, you're, you're known as a very religious man. Um, how, how does your religion impinge on your business or your business impinge on your religion? Well, the religion is a very interesting point and um, uh, I was not a, a road to Damascus Paul who saw this flash of light. Um, I just um, evolved in my religion and become very much stronger because of that. I think the key thing is, um, and with my faith, you grow in that faith and you grow in your, your priorities and what you think is right and what ethics should be, because we all learn and we're all evolving, there's no perfection in this world. Um, but I really believe that uh, faith and the ramifications of that are the only way forward. I, I honestly think there's a, a, a massive power of evil in the world today and I think we've got to counter that. I think we've got to counter that by example. I think people in business have got to be seen to be honourable. I think they've got to work with ethics. Um, and I think religion, for me, is a very good base for that. You know, uh, I'm not prepared to tell a lie. Don't tell lies because I'm a great believer. I have a fear of God and I have a respect for uh, my Christian religion. And so whatever the benefits, I don't want to sacrifice uh, that feeling, that feeling of ethics for gain. I don't think it's the thing to do. And I, I honestly think uh, that if you can keep that particular philosophy, uh, you're rewarded. I, I really believe you're rewarded. I think God will reward you. And people want to do business with people who are honest. You know, you can be tough as old boots, which probably I am sometimes. Uh, but, you know, people know that they're going to be dealt with honourably and if you give your word you honour your word and uh, I think that's very important because we live in a village you know the world is a very small place now and uh, 
uh, as I say, I don't know if you're going to my lecture this evening, uh, but if you are, you will hear some of the stories based on, on, uh, on that religion and based on being honest and how the uh, position has been rewarded. You know, you could take the quick buck type thing or, you know, do something which is going to give you a quick gain. But I think to give a foundation for something for the long term and create a reputation, I think you need those values. And I, I, I'm where I am now in my evolution, and uh, I pray every day and I read the Bible every day. You know, we're all evolving, and you know, I'm a human being at the end of the day, and so therefore I'm trying to improve myself all all the time. But I have those certain guidelines, and I don't go over those guidelines. I want to feel comfortable with myself, and I want people to understand that they can create wealth and be successful and still be honest, whatever your faith, it doesn't matter. If you've got a, a belief in God, I think that's a help. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.